Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 127th episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse, 20th Anniversary Edition. Lands of the Dead, Revival of Ancestors. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle, also known as Guards the Low. He's a Philodox of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Korra. She's an Aruna in the Geta Fenris. Hi, I'm Adam. I play Mark Guides the Fallen, and he's a third of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, Speaks in Sweet Whispers. He is a Theurge of the Silent Striders. Hello, my name's Thomas. I play Dimitri Howells in Memory, Lupus Galliard of the Bone Nars. Hi, my name is George. I am playing William Grows Matrices. He is a Foster and Arun of the Glasswalkers. Last time, the packs came together for the Great Moot at the Sept of the Sacred Stone where their renowns and rank challenges had finally been recognized. It is then that Traveler arrived and announced that they must go and begin their journey with the last White Howler. The packs agree and finally reveal to Sacred Stone and the Garu Nation that Malcolm Wormherder had died at the hands of the first Ronin. Caught up, the packs bowed their heads, ready to go, knowing that they had till the turning of autumn, when the paths to the lands of the dead and the roads to the green path became more open with change. The mood has closed, and you all start approaching the fire starters. Final scale, first wolf and raven are all here. Do, uh, do the three of you have some time to talk? First Wolf nods. We've got a bit of time before the moon bridge opens and we go back on our way to Sept of the Green. There were some omissions from his final words. Uh, Kyle will look to those that were present at his final words. Cora's is trying to think of a way to put it gently, but can't. <laughs> While he was dying, he wanted us to... He, he had a request to protect snow and the child yep that <laughs> they all give like a a look we thought that you guys would need to know since as his the closest people to him we had the same thought the same look but snow and the baby it's why he was being hunted it's why the first ronin gave malcolm its attention she hasn't been found yet much to her own skill Raven nods and goes, Yeah, I know. Malcolm was asking us to find her for a while, and Pulse of the Prey didn't lead to anything. Final Skill kind of speaks up. I'm still skeptical about any kind of child between them. I, Are you sure it might not be... Well, you've got one with you, right? A, I'm, not blind, I'm not blind. A White Howler throwback? Maybe it was a Metis throwback that they'd captured and tried to rescue the messenger of phoenix confirmed it hmm. bloody snow hasn't given birth yet but soon <sighs> then i guess more the fool me final scale says i knew that i knew they had a relationship there did seem to be something figured no no children no foul well they were wrong about that well the no children part that was supposed to be an impossibility. But if Traveler mm -hmm. was right, then possibly. But birth could mean a lot of things. Remember, spirits don't really speak... Well, they don't speak in straightforward terms. I'm still skeptical. All the more reason to try and find her. Yep. We were going to go back to Sept of the Green and start working with Roger and Heather to do just that. I had planned to also tell Paints with Twilight, if you're fine with that. I think I there's just too much on our plates to handle it all, and we knew if you had been there, he would have told you. I think Paints with Twilight's on that list, too. Yeah, they've always been close, First Wolf says. I've got no problem with it. As he looks over and you see him have this glare at Raven, your friends aren't going to start any trouble, are they? Raven takes a deep breath. No, Alpha, I will not say anything to them. I also don't think it's real. No offense to all of you. Look, it... 
I've heard half the stories about you, and I, I believe nearly half of them were made up or exaggerations. Look, it doesn't matter. They were his final wishes. And at the very least, they can confirm that the Ronin's after Snow. Raven nods. Yeah. We'll try and keep an eye out. As, as, as our Alpha said, we're going to work with the remaining two members of the final Howl. If you find her, can you try to get word to us? Yeah. First Wolf goes, yeah. We'll do what we can. I know you You all loved Malcolm, and he'd been there for you since you were, at least most of you were Cleoth. Mm. Thank you. No. Well, looks like the moon bridge is opening. <sighs> Till next Safe. time. Safe travels. Good hunting. As they head off, and Kyle, you approach Paints with Twilight. Kyle's gonna do the exact same opener. <laughs> 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 and then point to Cora and Zeb. Cora's gonna look around real quick. No one around us. No one with an earshot. I like it's a busy sep still. Low voice. Just again, can't think of a an easy way to put it. Our omissions were that while he was dying, he asked us to protect Snow, find and protect Snow, and the baby, the child. As Andy goes, child? Cora's gonna close her eyes and kind of sigh a little bit, like, I've had this conversation, yes. Yeah, as you, it kind of goes through, and she starts reciting a couple prophecies. I could maybe see that, but I don't see how that could be Malcolm. No, as you, she she looks fairly distraught. Why don't Kyle, we sit down? you feel a massive shoulder smash into your side as you see Bloodwind there in lupus form as he looks at Andy, looks at you, and goes... What are you saying to my packmates? As he starts growling as he noticed the distress on her face from a good distance away, though did not hear anything you said. We're talking about Malcolm. As Paints with Twilight goes, it's okay, Bloodwind. As the Geta Fenris glares and starts to move off. I'll call you when, when we're done. He gives a snap of his teeth in acknowledgement and a bit of a show of aggression. All of Fomori's vein has the same look, just... <laughs> I think you both know, or we all know what this means. You especially. It was revealed in the Abyss. His pack can go ahead and doubt it. I have no doubt what this means. Yeah, I don't either. Could... I get... A perception... Alertness... Difficulty 8, please, from everyone who's there. Do you notice one little odd, little odd bits about Andy now? Her left eye is brown as it always has been, but her right eye is a slightly lighter shade of brown, like an almost hazel, uh, is something you all notice. Zeb, Kyle, and Mark, you notice that her hair is slightly different too. It's, it's unnaturally a bit longer than it was just even a few days ago. Maybe a couple of couple of inches not quite sure what how and then finally Dimitri and William she's maybe an inch two inches at the most taller than she has been and she's in her regular Hamid form yes right yep. okay a theme of suddenly jarring events in front of my face have you moved through flux recently, Andy? You appear changed. Do I? She looks over herself. I agree. You do look a bit changed. There are noticeable differences, yes. Hm. I don't know what to tell you. I don't feel any different. Spirits have senses of humor on occasion. Make your hair longer, your eye color. Might I... be even a little taller. Hm. Seems like everything about you grew. Huh. Yeah, I don't think so. I've always been this as she gives... Her height, and it matches with the height that you recognize. I've always been this tall. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go go hang out at Malcolm Stone's for a little bit, if you don't mind. Of course. The only people we've told are you and the Firestarters. I, I'm not saying you should keep it to yourself. Just, if there's someone else you feel sh should know... It'll stay in my pack. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. Of course. She walks away. A couple days pass... And Dimitri, 
You're on a nice, leisurely walk in the city with William. He's invited you out to your favorite fast food restaurant, which means that you know it's going to be a great conversation, and you're really starting to bond with him. It seems like you're going to be friends after all. Dimitri, let's go sit down. We got our food. All right, yeah, let's... let's... Yeah, he has a good place to sit. You guys sit down. The trays have that nice smell of fast food as the paper looks like it's been run through a tumble dryer full of grease. Exactly how Dimitri likes it. Are you implying that Dimitri eats the napkins? I'm implying that Dimitri eats the worst possible fast food imaginable because he has lizard brain lupus thing where it's just like, look at how many calories are packed in this small meal. We could run for days off this. This was a delicacy decades ago. Bonars would chew on this and run for miles. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I love you, Dimitri. But I have I have to talk to you about something. Oh, what is it, William? You know all those kinfolk that we brought back from up north to Colorado? And we... And by we, I mean I also opened the doors to... A bunch more of the kinfolk here in Colorado, giving a place to stay and a job. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, did did something happen? No, no, nothing. Nothing happened specifically. Just that you can no longer come to the apartments for a while. What do you mean? Part of providing for our family means having to give up some of our own rights. In regards to Veronica is now staying at, at the apartments. I don't know the history between you two, but I'm sure there's damn good reason that she hates your guts. Dimitri's gonna give a nod and say, Yes, there is. It's I I was on a dark path before the ill omens in Tremori's vein went to El Erebus, and along the way I I I unintentionally hurt people that I cared about. I, I'll i stay away from the apartments. I don't want it to be permanent, and I don't want any bad blood between family. If there's anything that can be done, I will help. But it's a two-way street. If Veronica doesn't want it, it's not going to happen. It'll have to come around, she'll have to come around to wanting you back. I was not going to try anything unless unless Veronica approached first. I I know what I did wrong, and it is up to her. All right, uh, it is August. Zeb, you hear a call from the gatekeeper calling your name specifically. Zeb will head to the gate. As you head to the gate, you see a familiar woman. It is your mother... Gatekeeper, this is Ruth Harmony of Solace, Alpha of the Dread Corral. Winds of the Ash and Dead said you were looking for me. Yes, ma'am. There was some news I wanted to impart with you. And I'll look to the gatekeeper if I might welcome her in. She is allowed in. She is a strider, after all. And striders tend to bring news. Well, walk someplace quietly. E, coffee. Perhaps a little less nervousness. I had heard Herak the Mad cured a blight on some fields out west. It was very good to hear. No doubt the corn maiden is pleased that a bountiful harvest will come, and the lands are better. There is some official news that I would talk to you about, but first, something personal. I have avoided you for these 15 years uh, because I am solely and directly responsible for the death of father. Her I eyes was, narrow. I was duly brought to Erebus as a result of this. I will, You knew what happened, but not all of what happened. Indeed, the farms around us began to fall to veins that infested the people with greed. Father's paranoia increased, and we ignored it for the time. And it became slightly worse when he did things he never did, like taking the God of Abraham and Jacob's name in vain, or using profanity or alcohol, things that were not his custom or that of his family. I ignored these things continually until he sent the family away. 
and I should have called for help. And I didn't. And she stops when it you was... for she stops you for a moment and she looks you right in the eye. You can see just a slight glazing of tears and her throat mildly constricted with why didn't you? Because I was a coward and had great shame. And I did not keep faith in all of the things we value at that moment in time. I failed the first test of my conviction. And he died an agonizing death at my hand to make a terrible deal that left me generally as I am now. But it is I alone who have wronged you and taken this from you. She stands up, takes a few deep breaths, you feel a massive sting on your cheek as her backhand strikes you across the cheek from your blind side too, making it so that it was even easier to get the solid hit on you. He'll stumble, probably because she is much larger and stronger than he is. She takes another deep breath. I am... I am so disappointed in you speaks in sweet whispers as another slap comes out of just lightning quick reflexes smashes into your face as you feel a couple of your molars almost feel loose your silence is deafening zeb as there's another slap i've done all i i've done all i get to not be that guru now which is nothing that brings him back <sighs> I've taken out a pack, attempted to lead them as best- Idiot! Slap! Other hand, other side. Oh yeah. If I had known that you had thought so lowly of me, I would have challenged you in the pit as our runes fight. To think I couldn't see, to think that you thought I would abandon you, that I would hurt you, that I would do something terrible to you for the crime of being young and prideful. The fact that you, for these years, stole two family members from me. You stole your father's life because you were a fool. You stole your life from me because you're a coward. I did everything I could to try and die. And through Grya's great mercy, I didn't. And I have. I am deeply sorry for that crime and i knew we don't have much time left which is why i wanted to to own up to my mistake and stop this pain in our family she nods she takes a few deep breaths as she takes her hands and she runs them through her hair and she grabs the thin thin shortcut hair and she pulls slightly the frustration the grief everything just on her face (sighs) okay You robbed me of years, but I would be a terrible, terrible elder (sighs) if through my grief I robbed robbed myself of the rest. There's more now, which is why I called you here, because I I wanted you to hear it from me first before it went to anyone else. During my challenge for Athro, I had stalked or chased for a time Well, I won't call it that. I had shadowed the first Ronin. I was unsure of where it was headed. It was headed toward a theurge of renown who is now dead, killed by the first Ronin's hand called Malcolm Wormherder. In his dying breath, Wormherder revealed a piece of news that he was safeguarding or attempting to safeguard a child, a cub born of Metis. Soon. This news was revealed to me both in the Abyss by the First Ronin and now the Herald of Phoenix. I believe this is a time for our tribe to stand as one, to hide this thing. I have thing, thing, that's a blur, to hide this child, unborn, untarnished. I told one other, but I tell you now, I think something can be done. The Eye of the Worm opened soon. This I know too. If we as a tribe can stand as one and hide this child from the worm and keep it hidden. Maybe there's something to be said for our own end. I'll look for the child, and it'll give me an excuse to find you and you me. I head soon to the to beyond the second veil, with one that begins his own his own rite of passage for Great Lion. I will keep an eye out for additional information that I hear and ensure that it gets to you. 
Thank you. Until we meet again. Until we meet again. It's been, it's August again, and you've all noticed a couple additional changes with Andy Paints with Twilight. Her facial structure has changed a little bit. It's very slow, but now that you look at her, her face is just slightly different. Her hair and her complexion, slightly different. Her both eyes now hazel. Mark, noticing these, you approach Storm Chaser. Storm Chaser, Rhea. Do you have some time to talk in private? Yeah, yes, of course, I have time. Is this about the things we've been talking about these past few months? Yes, yes it is, and just interesting, interesting things regarding Andy Paints with Twilight. I've noticed, and I'm not the only one, physical changes to her appearance that she shrugs off nonchalantly, as if she doesn't even notice them or thinks there's been no change whatsoever. I've noticed something similar. Yes, but it's got me thinking about our little investigation. I know know, Paints with Twilight was cousin to Malcolm, and you did bring up mention that this probably went deeper. Someone that could possibly gain. What if what if the leak for the raid was a distraction to bring out Malcolm? Hmm, that could be. Though I wonder why the enemies would be so concerned about a single, well, a single mule of one of the moderately sized tribes. You call him a mule, bud. He's a mule that has done legendary things for the nation. And bringing down a legend like that certainly could leave a big vacuum that could be easily filled by someone that feels they could fill that in. Are you insinuating that Painsley with Twilight would fill that void? Fill that vacuum? Or attempt to? Be difficult. She's Hamid, last I checked. Indeed. I don't have proof or evidence to outright point it at her, but perhaps maybe she too is another pawn. Unknowing. Just... The coincidence of things in the past few months, I can't ignore it. Changes in Paints with Twilight, the slaying of Worm Herder, the return of the last Ronin, the news of a impossible Metis child. It's <laughs> almost as if it's been planned. It's possible. How about this? I believe that the Traveler has you doing something of some sort. That is in correct a few for my. That is correct. Would it be beneficial, then, for you to summon a spirit and bind them to me for maybe two, three months that I can use to spy on Paints with Twilight and maybe try and find her masters? If they do exist. If they do exist. But it would be perhaps just a simple raven spirit or a storm crow allow me to watch over her and maybe follow these threads if they exist. Indeed. It is a good suggestion. Do know I don't feel good about this spying upon my own sister. No. No, it is never good. But you are doing the right thing by coming to me. I thank you, uh, Rhea. I'll assist you with the summoning of the... Well, assist. I can summon, I take it. You cannot. Correct. I can assist you. Okay. And we'll just say you go through that, and you get him his his spirit, and he offers to take all the... uh, all the burden of the rules of the compact so that you are free to do your other things. September rolls around. It's starting to get cold. It is time to do what you must. Matthias is there as he's ready, nodding, as you all gather in the sept grounds. As Matthias kind of speaks up. So do we look for the green path or do we venture into the lands of the dead? Well, Matthias, I... I believe that may be your choice. It is your rite of passage. But, I mean, we do have uh, Zebulon here. If you choose to, that we go to the lands of the dead, uh, he can guide us. That's possible. I just want to... It is said that it's best, especially for me. I am a, I am a cub to listen and weigh the advice of one's elders to figure out what the best course of actions are how's in memory Rhea. Yeah, that is that is very wise of you, Matthias. And uh, fair. This decision could it could be everything. 
I think we should spend a good long time discussing these options before we choose. Well, if we have, as you said, a one who can already get us to the lands of the dead, perhaps that is the easiest path and the most apparent one. I have been tending to a significant number of ghosts in the caves that we cleared. I need to bring them home, so I will bring you to the lands of the dead. You will please retrieve for me two rabbits. Now, like looking at Matthias, two rabbits only. That is the only thing I require from you. Otherwise, we will go on your journey with no further cost. Sure, I'll go hunt some rabbits now as he shifts into lupus and runs off into the woods. Comes back a couple hours later. Hands them both to you. Very well. One that's alive, I'll hand to him. You will keep this one alive. It is the key for us to coming back here. Oh, okay. The other I will take. For you, less for the others who have seen this happen before, we're going to thank this rabbit for the life that we're going to take. We're going to shed its blood and we're going to open a way beyond the second veil to the lands of death. It is a place absence of just about any, everything except for some horrors, and I'm sure you've heard plenty of legends in the Fortress of Silver Tara. Do you have any questions? No, I just... Do you know... I, they said the black the black waves and the, the gray beaches? That, that's what Lion told me. Do you know what that is? I know there are ferrymen, and there are those that move the dead through those lands, at least from the beliefs of my people. There are many places deep within those lands. We'll see them soon. We'll know the boats. I know you have some talons on you. That might very well be the cost to ride that ferry. Again, that part is yours. But I'll be there to make sure that no harm comes to you. I understand. Then I have been waiting a very long time just to be Clea, so I am ready <laughs> to make very my well. journey. Yep. Okay, do I have to go back up to the cave to get these ghosts or can I... We've can we done that. You, you, like, you, we've done them. Yeah. Okay, great. We, we've done that, yep. Perfect. Alright, difficulty of the gauntlet here is five, right? Oh, uh, if you're in the care, it's difficulty four, I think. Difficulty four, fantastic. Alright. As the gateway opens, as you see the blood of the rabbit collapse, its body instantly rot and its bones turning into a twisted v- ivy gateway of bone white ivory. And you descend as your feet, your footsteps are enveloped by shadow and muffled sounds as you enter and you see the forest around you, dead or dying. Beetle kill a thousand times worse. The stone grave sites at the Hall of Heroes already decaying, broken, chipped. The skull upon Malcolm Wormherder's final resting place, overly decayed, breaking one of the horns, the same one torn from his head, already fallen and laying upon the earth, as you see the flickering lights of Colorado Springs in the distance. As Matthias is like, where do we go to now? How do we find these shores? Maybe, (laughs) as Matthias goes, this may seem like a real silly question, but would it have not been wiser to find these ferrymen and these dark shores? from a state that is not landlocked. What we're about to look for doesn't have the same reflection as you think about the Umbra. We're going to move away from this to a slightly deeper, darker territory that is broken away. What we will see instead won't be a reflection of this place, but something that's been rendered completely on this portion beyond the veil. It is a breakaway. You think about what you see here now that's decaying, what we'll journey toward will be something that exists nowhere else anymore because it's been so consumed by death. Okay, so I guess lead the way. Uh... All right, well, shepherd, shepherd this group deeper than Keegan. Okay, as you start moving through the depths of the underworld, slowly but surely, it's difficult going as the mountains make way to plains and the plains lead to strange streams and marshland that doesn't seem to really exist on your normal living side of the Vale. But the time taken is quite 
quite costly in terms of days as you've been traveling now for about a month before all the rivers start to finally condense the gray reeds open up and you see the great beach it is blank it is cold with the reeds the few scattered reeds blowing gently in rather strong winds in the distance you see rocky outcroppings on the beach that seem to hang just upon the horizon and on the and then over the ocean you see great storm clouds thundering and bursting with flares of light as the light explodes and you see the scattered screams of the damned rise up from oblivion and sink back in a ferry of ships lay there as you see the tall cloaked figure in dark robes and a perfectly carved mask waiting patiently upon the shores I'm going to turn to Matthias some would call these those that follow Astyros or Kerun or Ferryman your journey requires you to move across it didn't say across just that it would be here that there'd be an ocean involved but let us go speak to that let us speak to them very well as you approach the masked and uh, robed figure stop with the habitant terrace zeb you catch that as what business do the living have in the lands of the dead i felt the ghosts with me right for all this time yeah can speech of the world convert to the to the ancient language that he's speaking? Yes. It's Latin. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I figured it was something, but at the same time, it could be Keegan's slant on said language. So Fair I enough. Wanted to, I wanted to clarify. But it's probably inaccurate as hell. It's Google Translate. Kind of look at Translate for the group, and I'll look at uh, M- Matthias. I'll speak for myself. The rest of you can say whatever you'd like. You, on the other hand, this might just be a ver- for journey to see. But I'll take this part, and I'll look at Honored One. I bring the dead home, who have suffered greatly in the skinlands and have fallen to abuse. I shepherd them here this far, and take them a little farther, so they might know safety, and to return with those they love to be safer, less alone, less harassed, less inclined to their eternal rage and suffering. You get a kind of a deep chuckle when you finally hear. Miguan Tom Nkor Edo Isis test to see why you were here. As his language switches to English. Very well. I will shepherd these ones and shepherd others, but you still have not answered my question. I will not carry the living to Karen's jewel. This one was told, and I'll point at Matthias. There was something here for him to witness. I am not here to give tours to young boys, or... As you, he kind of gives a... Or beasts. No, you do not belong. Just as the others who have fallen onto this side and have tried to go to Perrin's jewel. No, you will not be allowed. Hunt if you must. But do not hunt by me, and leave as swiftly as you can. I will raise no hand against you. You do not have enough coin on you to make it worth my time. As the winds kind of pick up and there's a brief, massive gust, as a couple of your ghosts actually fall and roll as Matthias shifts instantly to, like, block one from blowing away with his bulk and Krynos. I'll give it a shot. All right. Fairman watches you approach. Honored one, I mean not to detract you from your duties, but as he has pointed out to the young boy, he is on a quest here. Many of us here are on the same quest as he, but I am here at the behest of the Traveler to be here, to see this young boy go through his quest, to see it through, as we all are here too. I do not know the Traveler. And my quest only is to shepherd the dead. As I said, four leg, run into the hills and howl is what you do best. 
Mark will just kind of give a head nod and back away. And look at Matthias. You're supposed to look for the ghosts of lions that hunt upon white sands, yes? Yes. Well, perhaps we look around. As the ferryman said, hunt if we must. Do not interfere with his duty or attempt to go to Sharon's jewel. Or Karen's jewel. Alright, so to do that, I'm going to take it as just one roll uh, from the group. And you guys will choose who does it based on the highest die pool, etc. I need either a perception survival or perception primal urge. Difficulty 8, please. And primal urge only if you're in hispo or lupus form during this. Five? I, I have oh. five, yeah. So, I, mean, I think Zeb then. Just because it's the lands of the dead, like... His wheelhouse. No pressure, we're all counting on you. <laughs> oh. Boy, come on, yeah, buddy. Oh, damn! Hot All right, damn. Woo. combing through the sands, and you get a smell. It sounds, or it smells oddly familiar, just slightly more rotted, obviously. As you find what appear to be crinos tracks on the sand in the distance, leading to the rocky outcroppings. Well. Kind of point the way. Follow. Head toward them. All right. So as you head toward them, it takes about two days to get there, and you get to them as the rocks are jagged, high, and intimidating. As you see, and it see, you do hear kind of sounds throughout the hills. Now you do hear almost like wolf howls. I will need a strength as athletics check, diff six, for you to start climbing to the top of this thing. I'm going to need a total of five successes. Each roll represents about an hour's worth of climbing. Ooh, not a botch on Matthias's part. First hour for William, I'll let everyone else catch up. Kyle's scrambling the fuck up there. Mark's kind of going up. Cora got to the top and is just kind of catching her breath. Zeb made it before everyone else. Alright, second hour of of the rolls. Everyone, please. William's almost there. Dimitri is not. Kyle made it. Oh, that was for the first one. Oh! Dimitri, Dimitri had a bad start, but then he just was like yeah, Third attempt from Matthias. Oh, nice, holy shit. William. Nice to meet you. And Matthias, on his third try, gets up to so three hours of climbing. As you look over, is it's a vast ravine of jagged rocks, dipping valleys, shooting pillars of stone, looking like knives slicing the skies above. Now we will need either an int survival or int primal urge. To kind of try and move through this area and find or kind of navigate livable areas. So int, uh, int survival primal urge. or int primal urge. I know Thomas, you got a huge int pool. Yeah, that's yeah, what I seven. thought. Yeah, yeah, don't don't be holding out on the group. Not trying to. So so it's gonna be Dimitri making this roll. Get it, Dimitri. You got it. Just enough. Oh as it takes about two days of searching before you do finally see and find something. As you get to the open cave mouth and you see a Krinos Garu with traditional Pictish runes painted upon its fur. As it turns and it looks at you and as it speaks in the Garu tongue. Who are you? You, as he looks at Matthias and you see, like, almost instant recognition. You. Oh, look at Matthias. I am Korurok. I was there when my tribe fell to the spiral. I am the last white howler. And I died with my honor and my spirit intact as I ran to the Fiona Karens and spoke of the fall of our tribe and prevented worse damage when they came screaming 
from the labyrinth. But you, you are my hopes and dreams, it seems. I have cleansed an entire pack of spiral ghosts and turned them into white howler spirits. The taint is removable in death. Matthias nods. Lion told me to seek you. As he looks over all of you. Who are you all who bring this child to me? His guides and his friends. People who would see the worm destroyed and the white howlers restored, if possible. There are many paths and only Lion can do it, but I, I have a deep desire to guide this boy. How did you come here? We moved beyond the second veil, across Great Waste. When we reached the ferryman, we began to hunt and made our way up the cliffs to find your, your cairn here. I wish to guide the boy, but it would be difficult for you to keep bringing him here like this, and I cannot protect him on the other side of the second veil. I have been denied my chance to help him. As you see him like actively seeming to work through the problem. I have a request then. A way to truly rebuild the White Howlers. Do this for me, and I will give my aid and my knowledge of the tribe to the boy whenever he calls for it. There's no other way for it to happen otherwise. What is it you require of us? I need a homeland so that I may become an ancestor spirit along with those I've killed. We cannot f- go to the traditional White Howler homeland, for it has become a radioactive wasteland in the Umbra, and now is the ancestral homeland of the Black Spiral Dancers. So we need a new homeland in the Umbra. Something solid. What I require is for you to enter the Cyber Realm, enter the highest echelons of Spider City, And then I will require you to steal a spark of stasis and stability from one of the great lords. From there, you will have to go and keep that spark of stability alive and unspoiled into the lands of Flux. Find a homeland that you could solidify and break the spark open so that it will violently rip and be rejected by Flux and become an actual land to which we can return to. From there, you will have to find me again, and then we can be led by your gift of the second veil piercing into a homeland where we can become ancestor spirits and guide the boy. Is this all your challenge, young one? As Matthias takes a deep breath, it's very clear that he did not understand all the words that were spoken, But he can read the room well enough to know that it is a lot. And he goes, No, I also must follow the green path with those who have tread it before. To reaffirm, as he goes, The pact with the queens and lords of winter. The unseely court were connected to the White Howlers as the seely court is connected to the Fianna. This is quite a journey and quite a rite of passage. I see why you have so many guides. Mark will put a comforting paw on Matthias' shoulders and and say to the uh, ancestral spirit, given the weight of the success of this rite, I figure it is a heavy task for him, yes. But that's why we are here, to help see him through. Matthias nods and goes, I am ready to reclaim my tribe. And I know that these ones have aided me before. So with that, you all begin to make your trek out of the underworld. Thankfully, now knowing the ways, it takes only two weeks instead of a month. As you return, as October has turned to November, the cold grip of winter coming. As you finally get back into the uh, the skin lands or the shadow lands of the underworld. As Matthias pulls out a very sickly rabbit, though still alive, as it has had very little food to eat at this point. Well done. As you instantly pass through and you are back in the penumbra of the Sept of the Sacred Stone. As Matthias goes, so how do we get to the Cyber Realm? Luckily, I have just the Arun for you. Now look at William. 
Well, maybe we check back in with our associates and friends, rest, eat real food that's not ash, and we can look at step number two. That sounds fine to me. All right, well, I'm going to cross back over into the set. Everyone else doing the same? I will. Uh, Before Mark does, he wants to gain the attention of a raven spirit. Okay. You do so as the raven spirit looks at you. Shiny? Mark will... I'll use a gnosis and form it into the shape of very shiny, shiny coin. Because it grabs it. it And he goes... uh, He'll talk to the raven... I need assistance on a riddle, with another riddle. Ravens know where the blood of fire hides, but will only speak in riddles. Riddle of a riddle, riddle of a riddle. Do you look for ravens or raven riddles? I look for raven riddles. I am a raven, not a riddle. Good luck. Ah! (laughs) Mark's going to take a journey and try to find a higher level raven spirit to talk to. So everyone else is eating. Mark, you're going to have to do a summoning roll. So a larger raven spirit approaches. The gaffling steps forward. He looks at you, his eyes thundering with storm clouds and his feathers, literal shadows that form his body. Why have you called me stranger? Mark will take another Gnosis. This time he'll form it in the shape of, like, an insect of some kind for him to pick at. Grabs, flings back, and swallows as you see his craw fill slightly. Thank you for appearing to me. I seek an answer to a riddle. I am on a a journey bestowed upon me from Traveler. It asks in a booming voice as you hear the crash of thunder. I shall walk in the places between seasons. The ravens know where the blood of fire hides, but will only speak in riddles. The blood of fire could mean many things. It could be the blood, blood of Gaia herself. It could be the blood of many things, but I do not know, and I do not know the riddles you seek. Perhaps you are seeking instead of a raven, something else, something that is like a raven, but is not a raven. Something that speaks in riddles and plays with joy. Something of melancholy. Something of distant storms. Lost in an endless blizzard. A riddle is the best riddle when the answers are hidden in plain sight. To reach for the answers is to leave the domain of the riddle. Mark will take his furry paw and kind of scratch his chin and ponderance over it and Thank you, Reverend Spirits. This does help me in my journey. It gives me a direction to go. Thank you again, and he'll give a bow. Nods as, meanwhile, you guys are all at the cheap restaurant that Kyle has shown you multiple times, not because it's his favorite, but because it's the one he can afford, and it's within walking distance of the Sept, though he's never specified it that way, so... William, Zeb, and Matthias have always just assumed it's his favorite restaurant, as you have all walked there to kind of sit in a corner, which makes it very easy to discuss business without being listened in on. Wow, Kyle, this must be your favorite place. We come here all the time. Yeah, of course, it's close. Where else are we going to go? I could name ten places that are better than this place. Well, sorry, Mr. Fancy. Feel free to take us there next time. With your fancy ride app. With your fancy doubloons and... (laughs) As your other favorite part of this joint, Kyle, is when the food is ready, you hear the bell, which causes all your conversation about Garu business to cease. As the little old waitress, easily in her 70s, carrying every plate you've ordered on her two arms, shakily moving over, and then dexterously and deftly sliding the plates in front of you, remembering who ordered what. Y'all have a good lunch, okay? Thank you. Of course, hon. As she's now out of earshot and the discussion can begin again. So, I ask again, how do we get to this 
cyber realm? As Matthias asks, as he takes a, just a chunk of toast and starts eating and goes... He looks at it as he's used to, like, English toast and, like, English breakfast. So he's like, your breakfast sausage is awful, by the way. Yeah, not the best. You have trouble trusting glasswalkers. Are you sure you wish to go to the cyber realm? If it's the best way to fulfill what the ancestor wants, then I'll swallow any prejudice I might have. Good, because that's exactly where we're going. Back to my home, Cairn. We have to cross another veil to get to the cyber realm. Sure. Yeah, that sounds fine, I guess, as he takes a deep breath and continues to eat. As the door rings and you see Mark walk in as the little old waitress Bethany goes, I'll be right there, hon. Oh, my group's already here. I could see him. I know. I can go over and get your order, though. It's okay. not like I don't see you all the time. You're always with that young, nice young man over there. Oh, well, well thank you very much. And I'll make my way over to the table. Bethany Pull has fucking up. ten willpower. The curse doesn't do shit to her. Oh, <laughs> she's geez. seen Lying, some so. shit. <laughs> Sounds like she's worked at, uh... You could shift it to Krynos and she go, I knew it. <laughs> no delirium. <laughs> You don't get to anyway. be this old and not see the way of the world. <laughs> now I ask you again, what's your order? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go ten roll powers at working food service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> it went over to the full table. One hundred percent can into this game, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. so, yeah, yeah. All right. She works at Pancake Castle. <laughs> All right. Anyway, as you sit down, everyone's kind of eating. Matthias nods as you see him going, do you want these? As he ha- puts the breakfast sausages and he starts eating the bacon. Gladly. And he'll just start taking them link by link with my hand and just... I guess we're going to visit as she comes over and takes Mark's order and walks away. Uh, I hear we're going to be take- going to William's home. I guess that's the easiest Whoa. path. Yep. We have to go to the Cyber Realm. Once we're there, though, that's going to be the the difficult part, is obtaining one of those powerful... Keegan, are they artifacts or talons or fetishes? It's it's literally a shard of existence. Super! (laughs) (laughs) Okay. The, the, The difficult part, once we're there, is taking a powerful piece of the realm well hell the the other difficult part i'd say friend is there's only certain places we can go compared to where you can go and then there's a limit for all of us right and there's even a limit think, for me i think yeah i think you get a couple more floors in the elevator but through chewing on the breakfast sausage mark's gonna are we gonna not address the elephant in the room about our last time in this in cyber city I wonder if, in in a stroke of what Cora thinks is is genius on her part, um, I wonder if we could get help from Little Spider again. What's his name? He's gonna be so dis- devastated. No, don't don't yeah. tell him. Don't he's tell gonna, him. He's gonna he's gonna Instagram all them cry emojis. We we love him. <laughs> he's probably the only part of the cyber realm we love. <laughs> You love him I would that like you to can't know. remember his name. I, I would like my own name. I would like to know what happened the last time you guys were in the cyber realm. Well, it was like what our second time there, and we got caught in that really, uh, really restricted area zone building, talking to big old cyber realm spirit guy. We were somewhere we weren't supposed to be. As you always are. I think he might have given us a warning of he doesn't want to see us back there again. The last time that we went into the cyber realm, William, was before the cyber dogs fell, and it was to get evidence to find out what had happened. Then we disappeared. Right, and I believe then that's when you had to handle the aftermath of what occurred. We haven't been back since. Um, A lot of that was looking after the things that Lawrence Soundwave had done and trying to find more. We then kept our mouths shut 
to get out of the cyber realm to ensure that the, the glass walkers weren't destroyed when the rest of the Guru Nation found out about the experiments. So we had used fake ID cards to get through to a bunch of other things. That's part of the problem. And plenty of us were certainly recorded as we wronged plenty of spirits, myself included, operating there. So you and Matthias might be traveling just fine. The plus four that would be coming along would probably be a significant drawback. We uh, also had a minor showdown with some mages. Particularly one that's on my shit list. He'll gnaw at some breakfast sausage angrily. Well, that might complicate things even more than it was a busy day. As Matthias just looks around and goes, Well... Yes? Just... Do we wish to spend some time coming up with a plan then? Do we want to work? I can't believe I'm going to say this, but should we work with some of the glass walkers at William's Sept to maybe ease our transition into that realm? If we don't, you, everyone here is going to be relegated to the, the shadows. No, you're there's right. There's not many. No. This isn't my tribe. This is yours. You might negotiate this for your tribe with the glass walkers and use some of that currency you have as payment and be what might be brokered on your behalf with William's help. And they might have some ideas we don't. I think you should. And I think the resources that are available between William and those endeavor, and I won't volunteer your resources personally, brother, but at least the introductions that could be made. I can do that. Otherwise, we're going to start. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to start in the lowest tier and just fight our way up to the top again. And it doesn't usually go too well for us. I, I understand. I just, Kyle, Cora, you remember that one glass walker? Are you both positively sure there's nothing like that at that sept? At the sept? I'm, I'm confident. They're our friends. We've spent a lot of time there, but. The Cyber Realm is another story. That I understand. But I was making sure of revealing who and what I am. Well, as the lady comes by, drops off Mark's food, as she just goes over to Matthias, puts a comforting arm on his arm, goes, Oh, don't worry. My grandson came out to us, and we loved him all the same. I know your folks will too. As she walks back to the kitchen, smiling and Matthias goes she is I can see why this is one of your favorite places Kyle thank you so just looking at this not not from the beginning but from the end from the goals perspective what I don't I don't know the meaning of this this item this thing that we must take but I mean the the thing we will use it for is to create order and stability in flux is that not something that it would be the weaver would desire i suppose but it's it sounds like we're creating an, something orderly to get it kicked out of flux the the way i understood it is that we are stripping a part of the cyber realm from that realm transporting it into another realm of chaos and as that realm of chaos kicks out this thing of stability it creates a tertiary realm of sorts like that pocket realm that we were in yeah i was just thinking that the last time we went to flux it was because there were too many portions of the weaver that were trying to return into order and it wasn't its true nature right and i my only purpose in bringing this up is just that perhaps there are factions of the weaver who would help us in this not just the glass walkers, but closer to the weaver itself. Well, perhaps we don't even need to steal this item then. We can negotiate a trade. And when we create this realm for Matthias's kin, that's just step one. And it might even put you guys in good graces with the cyber realm again. I don't think they're going to be able to negotiate, Willem. And the only reason why I counter this is because they are trying to add two they're not trying to take away from others but literally force fit a piece of that great realm to call their own for their ancestors to live everything requires some weaver for order even us to be able to exist right but it could still be more wild than weaver 
but we i don't i've never even considered ripping in a piece of essence of a domain and transporting it elsewhere your ancestor even... must have thought we were eminently capable matthias to to suggest that or desperate we're always desperate i was just wondering would it be like with the argument of restoring the white howlers be a good argument for returning some semblance of order since they were supposed to be here anyway you're describing this that their loss was a void that needs filled and that to, for equilibrium to reach to, to be achieved they'd have they need to return for there to be some kind of balance i can see what you're saying from a philosophical point of view on that but i'm not so sure but what else what else comes to mind though and, and it does kind of go with that line of thinking is no matter what william you have to go there whatever you're going to solve south whatever wound you're going to to heal to two hearts point whatever balance perhaps you return and redemption you bring we're going to be there anyway we'll see what your destiny reveals so i guess matthias speaks up first first things first we gotta go go to william sept is it far only about an hour or so away from here an hour's drive i should say okay Shall we finish up eating and start heading that way? Yeah. And so you guys finish up, you pack up, and you start making the trip to Denver. Uh, You will be riding with some kinfolk who had business up there, so that was easier than all the negotiations through a moon bridge. As you drive up, and you end up at the Steel Mountain, and you get ready to have your meeting with the Glasswalkers but we will find out how that goes down next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We'll catch you in that next episode. Bye. 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 Bye.